So I'd like to talk to you about masks. I imagine if you've been walking around the Bay Area any amount of time over the last few days, you've probably seen a lot of people wearing masks. If you're not aware, about 150 miles north of here, there are fires burning wild. The smoke from those fires had brought itself to the Bay Area, and people began to purchase these masks, different classifications of masks, N95, different colors, blue, purple, different colors of string and cords. Maybe you were wearing a mask. What if you didn't know that it was important to wear a mask? You know, I was at a school on Thursday doing some workshop with some students, and none of them were wearing masks. And Alameda County that day decided they were going to close schools for Friday. And I started thinking, I think I'm a little smart. Why haven't I picked up one of these masks? If Alameda County has decided they're closing all the schools, then maybe I haven't been reading something. Maybe I haven't been paying attention. There was not one student at that school who was wearing a mask that day. I don't know if anybody in their family had told them it's important to wear a mask. The Environmental Protection Agency says that the dangerous particles in the air, which measured by the, what is it called, the um, Air Quality Index, AQI, the dangerous particles, are so small that a human being's natural filters couldn't even protect them. And so the, the, the dangerous particles enter the lungs that could possibly cause long-term heart and breathing issues. What if you didn't know that? But I want to talk to you about some different kind of masks. A group of young men that we worked with at a middle school here in East Oakland who told me that every day, this is before the fire, this is for the time they've been in middle school, that they had come to school wearing a mask. Every day, they get up in the morning, they get ready, show up to middle school, and they bring their mask with them. But these masks you can't see. And these masks are not to protect them from some fumes or smoke or something in the air that is subparticles that you can't even see. Their mask is to protect them from other people. What if you, thinking back to yourself in middle school, did you have to wear a mask? How did you have to show up to middle school every day so that you could fit the part? So you could be a part of the community? So you could fit in or not fit in? Or just be. I realized that these young men, as they were talking to, about their mask, and in a very anonymous way, were really clear that every day they showed up to school, they had to show a certain part of themselves. Funny, happy, cool. Remember middle school? But those, so, those same young men realized that the things they couldn't show on the mask family problems, their real life, the real stuff they were going through. And some of them even said, you know what, I can't even tell you what I can't tell you. That's how serious it is. Think about yourself in middle school. What, what were you going through that you couldn't tell anybody about? What were some things that you were dealing with when you were in middle school that you realized that, oh, I can't tell anybody about this. There's, no, there's nobody to talk to about this. What about today? What mask do you have to wear to be respected by the people you want to be respected by? To hang out with the people you want to hang out with? To work in the place that you have to work? What mask do you have to wear? You see, we have collected in this 100,000 mask challenge, we set a challenge for ourselves, to collect 100,000 masks from all over the world. We've collected right now about 28,000 masks. And with those masks, whether we are in Columbia, South America, or we're in Canada, or we're, we're in Auckland, New Zealand, or we're in Oakland, California, people, young, older, parents, educators, entrepreneurs, global leaders, are clear that there's a part of ourselves that we have to keep behind this mask. It's not the particles that we're worried about, about our health, it's about our community that we don't feel we can fit into because maybe we won't be accepted the way we are. Maybe no one really understands us the way we are. 
How about today? How about today we think about creating a better world where we can see people for more than what we can see with our eyes? I believe there's a narrative that says, well, if I see it with my eyes, then that's exactly who you are. But I believe that there's way more to us than you could ever see just by looking at us. What if we could get a community where we came together more, we were more connected? What if today in this room, you could be a little bit more real with yourself and with those around you? How about you do that today? Find somebody that you know, that you just met, and see if you're willing to say a little bit more than what you would normally say. Because if we can't change the narrative of how we see each other, maybe we've got to change the narrative of how we understand each other and how we get along with each other and how we build community with each other. Because the work that we've seen with our, not only the young men that we work with, but the students that we work with all over the country is that they're clear that there's a part of themselves that can't be shown. Every day, three or more boys commit suicide. There are 2.4 million people incarcerated in the United States. Over 94% of them are men. I don't think that the masks are just a men issue, but we can see some of the problems clearly with what's happening with our men. Not being able to talk about what we're going through, having to keep it behind a mask until it blows over, until it explodes. And sometimes the blowovers and sometimes the explosion can be cleaned up with a, a baby wipe. Some of the explosions take years to clean up. And so there's a call to action for you today. The campaign is called the 100,000 Mask Challenge. You can find it at 100kmask.com. And you can participate. And today when you leave, or today when you go to that site, you will see masks from different parts of the world. And the question for you is can you take off your mask? It's anonymous, it's an opportunity, but what we found that people, when they participate and when they recognize that they're not alone, it begins, it, begins, it begins to build community deeper than we could ever do with just walking by each other saying hi, hello. It builds deeper connections with each other, recognizing that there's way more to us than I could ever know just by walking by you and judging you based on what you're wearing this color of your skin, the body that you were born into. And so the call is for you today. In the back of the room, the cards are there for you to take one with you, and maybe you do it with your friend, maybe you do it with your family, maybe you do it with your community, maybe you do it with just one other person. And with that support, with that work that we can do together here in this room, I believe we can change our community and we can change our world. Wouldn't that be amazing? I think so. Thank you.